continuing the four keys of Kabbalah, page eight at the bottom. Creation and existence contains the very immediate and constant presence, divine infinite light in every moment of every day. The challenge is to see the holiness, the divine spark in everyday life, especially when it is not apparent. Our purpose in this world where divinity is obscured is to remember that there is a holy core at the heart of everything even though we may not be able to see it physically. There are very few exceedingly holy individuals who can sense the infinite divine within finite matter. But once we come to know that it is there, we can all see the world in a different light. When we live with this purpose, it transforms the very reality of what we are observing. So now we are ready for the first of the Kabbalah keys. Kabbalah key one. All that exists has a divine spark within it an aspect of the infinite within the finite. I suggest you read this one more time. Think about it and let it settle in your mind. Every plant, every breath, every DNA strand, every galaxy and every idea is continually brought into existence by a divine spark. This key, yeah, spark. This key alone may be enough to change the way you look at the world, at others, and at yourself. All existence is connected through this divine creativity, which runs through each of us like a current. It connects all time, past, and future until the end of time. We and our life experiences are part of this oneness. The Creator we believe in remains intimately connected to every nano detail of His, with a capital H, creation. Hashem up close and personal. He is not merely omnipresent. Hashem fabricated presence in order for there to be a space in which we can experience the divine. Now the infinite within me. Until now we have been discussing the divine spark that brings all existence to life. The human being, however, is endowed with an additional dimension of energy. The neshama, soul. The soul gives us our consciousness, the capacity be to become self-aware, self-transcendent, and ultimately aware of Hashem. While all of existence contains a divine spark, the neshama allows humans to become aware of the divine within ourselves and in the world around us. This is the meaning of the verse, and Hashem created the human in his image, Bereshis Aleph Chavzayin. Just as Hashem is self-aware, so is the human being. Yeah, Aleph Eli, the Aleph, that's right. In the biblical story of creation, everything was created through divine words and Hashem said, let there be light, etc. This combination of Hebrew letters became the conduit for the flow of divine energy to bring about each particular creation. With regard to endowing a soul to the first human being, which similarly applies to every human being, like we say in the morning blessings, we say, May my Hashem, the soul which you have placed within me, is pure. You created it, you formed it, and you keep it within me. With regard to endowing a soul for the first human being, which similarly applies to every human being, the Torah says, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. Right? So like we said in the morning blessings, right? And in, and in Bereshus, Bez Zion. And see Yeshaya 54.16 and Yev 20.26 for an accurate connotation of the Hebrew word Vayifach, and he blew. Um... Existence was brought about through uttering words, which convey information or energy. The soul was endowed through blowing. The difference between the two is that when one blows, one blows from deep inside himself. Quoted from the Zayar and Tanya, beginning Perik Beis. He says, Emek HaMelech Shar Tikunei Tshuva, Perik 1. Blowing is symbolic of conveying not merely energy, but a deep personal connection, part of one's inner self. We can speak and say words for a long time and not get tired out, especially if you're a rabbi or an attorney. We can blow for a much shorter period because it is a much more intense breath than the breath needed for speaking. What this means is since the soul derives from God's breath, unlike the body, which derives from his words, the soul comes from deep within the Creator and is actually a part of Hashem above. Tanya Perik Beis. All of creation is endowed with divine energy. The human is endowed with divine consciousness. So inter-realm bridges. At its core, the divine consciousness is pure godliness. We call this level Yechida, singularity. 
the essence of the human soul, although individual, is pure godliness. Rabbi Chaim Vital explains in Eitz Chaim 42.1 that this is where the Creator and created intersect. However, Yechida cannot relate to our regular human experience. In order to achieve this relationship, the soul goes through a process of devotion so that our human psyche can experience godliness and act in a godly way. This devolution forms four subsequent levels of the soul. So you have Yechida, Chaya, Neshama. Well, so you have your first Yechida, but then the four subsequent levels are Chaya, Neshama, Ruach, and Nefesh. So Yechida translating to singularity, which the concept is, is essence. Chaya, the translation being life, which the concept is will. Neshama, translating as soul, the concept being thought. Ruach, being spirit, the concept being speech. Nefesh, translating to vitality, the concept being action. After Yechida, the essence contracts into the impulse of will. This level is called Chaya, which means life. Will then descends into intellect the information that makes up what we know. This level is called neshama, soul. The soul descends further into what we feel. This level, soul level, is called ruach, spirit. The final level is nefesh, which is the soul vitality of our words and actions. What we know, what we feel, our inner will and essence are expressed through the words we speak or the actions that we perform. By way of analogy, imagine you're sitting at home checking your email. On your screen are windows, buttons, boxes, and text. But what you see is not the reality of the computer. The reality of the computer is the email program that contains a design which allows you to do all the cool email stuff. Part of this design includes taking all this data and presenting it to human beings with a user-friendly interface. Under the hood, though, the program runs on a language or code that is entirely unintelligible to the uninitiated. You see an icon with an envelope on it. You click on it and you get your mail. In reality, in actuality, the computer content contains no envelope, nor, in fact, is there anything else that you see on your screen. It's just an image created in order for you to interact with it. It even has a name. It's called a GUI, G-U-I, pronounced GUI, meaning graphical user interface. Now, this program, its structure, and the language syntax that derives, that derives it is further based on the language of the operating system, such as Windows or Mac, these in turn are based on previous iterations of DOS, disk operating systems, etc. As we go deeper and deeper to the inner sanctum of computer initiates. Behind all this, though, we reach the primal language of the computer, binary code. This too is a language. Binary describes the flow of electrical current through the computer chip. Energy flow is one, while no energy flow is zero. Thus, at its very core, the computer in, is simply a glorified calculator answering yes, no questions in sequence. The flow of electricity throughout the chip allows the chip to compute. All subsequent computer languages are ultimately structured on the same logical binary process. So too with the soul. The soul has many dimensions to which we can relate, such as will, understanding, feeling, and action. But at its very core, the soul is our impregnable connection with Hashem. It is above understanding, above any experience. It is not affected by what we know or what we do. Indeed, it is the most profound definition of who we are. The question. You might ask, if everything is vitalized through a divine energy, divine reality, and we have this amazing godly soul, why can't we perceive the godliness in all of creation, especially in ourselves? To even get some sense of the divine, it's clear that we must invest effort, develop a deep understanding, and in the end also have faith in something that is impossible to see or measure. If everything that exists contains the divine, why can we not readily see it? Why isn't the one entity that's in everything, well, obvious? If I were the creator of the universe, I would want everyone to know who I am and know exactly how to spell my name, perhaps even without a hyphen. <laughs> the simple answer is that experiencing the infinite is not the purpose of creation. If it were, we would have been created with a much greater capacity for appreciating the divine and far fewer barriers. There is a much more profound purpose for every human being, and it will emerge through the four keys of Kabbalah. End of chapter one.